Okay, good evening, everybody. We welcome to the talk 55 uh, by Bob and Deepthi. Uh, we have many, many alumni staying abroad, but very few have actually come forward to share their experiences. So this is a great privilege to hear from Bob and Deepthi, who have uh, not just uh, who are based out of South Africa, but they've also traveled to and stayed and worked in Japan also. So without too much delay, I will just uh, hand over the platform. Bob Deepthi, please take it on. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Raj. Thank you. Thank you, Raj. Um, thank you very much. It's a, it's a pleasure for both of us to be on this platform today um, uh, with, with um, fellow IDCians. And um, uh, it has been like, you know, it's, it's just, uh, um, uh, you know, my, uh, just being ta talking on this platform is absolutely phenomenal. Thank you very much, Ravi and Nimesh and uh, uh, Raj for co conducting these kind of workshops and these kind of talks. It's very nice to meet people and all. Um, it's also uh, um, a warm a hello to uh, Professor Atwankar, who has also joined. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a privilege to have him here. Um, I just want to start with, start, we wanted to start with uh, where we ha have been. So this particular slide just indicates where IDC, IDC gave us a, a very good, IDC was an IOPLA, uh, gave us a very, very good grounding in terms of my background. Uh, my background is uh, was communication design for uh, five years of, of, of studies. After finishing that, I had no idea what I was going to do. I was quite clueless and then I entered IDC. And uh, it just gave me a very big, strong picture of perhaps what can be done, what are the possibilities, and, and something that I was, uh, I became very passionate about, just looking at the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the projects that uh, we, we did there, the, the, aspect, the aspects of, of being able to recreate uh, a product or, or, re, uh, or being very innovative. So that is something that I take back very strongly. We had, um, Professor R. K. Joshi, uh, Professor Kirti, Professor Bhandari, Professor Ravi, and learned from from the mm -hmm. masters on, yeah. on a Professor great Atsunda, level. Professor, Professor Rao, Atwankar, Professor those Rao. eliminated minds that really set uh, life changing experiences for us when we were there in two years in the IDC. Yeah, and that's a life long lasting experience. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Um, so and, on one hand, this is um, uh, on dedication to all of them. All of our professors at IDC, in spite of them, we spend every other um, probably another three decades in different parts of the different parts in India as well as in the world. I mean, IDC is very special for us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. From IDC, uh, both of us traveled to Japan and worked there, but in different times. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was very fortunate. That was like my golden ticket. Um, I went and worked with uh, um, uh, uh, Sugira Kohei. Uh, I think it's, he's known to all IDCians, I believe. And uh, his, I worked in his offices, uh, uh, plus size. And it was just this extraordinary experience of working with, with this master. Um, he, he was into Asian philosophy, Asian culture. And uh, what broadened mm -hmm. right my eyes was, was, was like, it just broadened my the whole understanding of of how a concept can be communicated in different levels, you know, and 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 can be just expanded. And the things that really touched me was his humility, his humbleness, his simplicity, and and how he approached everything. He was he was the master, mm -hmm. and my experience was invaluable um, there. Um, Bobin had a very different experience. Yeah. Um, I traveled and then I worked with the bamboo. I tried to understand how a country like uh, Japan could transform through industrialization and market, and uh, specifically with respect to crafting. So I worked with the bamboo development institutes and then also tried to understand how that ecosystem works and how the industry or uh, research institute and the developmental institute worked with respect to small and medium scale industries 
and that promoted the design throughout on a one particular material and i could see that reflections in every other material and then a broader spectrum of um, design as well so that is a remarkable experience as well but these two things to a certain extent the question could be oh how did we end up in south africa so that partially partly i mean it could be the destiny partly it's the family connections so we also felt i mean um, after working after we getting married and then working in uh, kerala for five six years we decided that we need to have a change and then we happened to be um, in south africa we thought we would spend another five years in south africa but that five years somehow happened to be another two decades or something more than two decades yeah when we came in south africa um, of course i'm a south african it's the 1994 is the democratization of south africa but if you understand the history of south africa this is probably where a racial segregation has formalized or it's an engineered um, racial segregation that is integrated into every walk of life in the olden days if you speak about the railway station if you speak about the um, the law court if you speak about the police station if you speak about the beaches um, there was segregation between what is considered to be european and what's considered to be non-european uh, that well established environment I and mean, through years of uh, struggle and uh, working against the apartheid and 1994 it became finally it became democratic country and then there is a need to change that uh, democratization and make it work and we happen to be in that environment and, and that specific time and um, the highest level of inequality that's evident the extremely rich globally rich um, families and individuals and businesses too and extreme poverty and then people who are <clears throat> as an architect um, I could immediately understand and then I could I had to study and understand this the sp spatial segregation and its limitation the cities were intended to be for the rich and then the affluent and the white race while the townships were or the dormitory places and these are settlement or this are, could be one could call it as a slums probably a better organized slum environment compared to other slums in globally uh, well established in terms of electricity etc um, but at the same time there are disenfranchised places and people had to literally shuttle between place of living and the place of work and that literally maintained the the poorer or put the people onto a particular um, la level or layer <clears throat> and democratization mandela desmond tutu um, at some stage we speak about it uh, somehow we disdain to live under two um, global legends or two global icons mahatma gandhi and uh, nelson mandela that seems to be um, somehow happened and then it's considered to be the golden era the um the rainbow nation of building up the rainbow nation so there is a euphoria in the air to a certain extent and we can also speak about it though euphoria to a certain extent dulled immediately after probably a year or uh, two years of work and then our challenge is in terms of what is our position i mean so here i mean it's two young uh, designers thought idc and then idc's experiences will set um, good prospectus for us but on the other hand i mean when you speak design design is is the rich and the affluent language in generally especially in south africa so when someone who is not that rich to speak about the design some of these people probably could frown upon so we had to literally um, work with absolutely no background and no godfathers and no connections and build up the connections purely because of the track record so uh, no background no degree certificates or no um, stamp saying that okay you guys are qualified enough to do that or experienced enough to do that is not um, valid in this particular environment anymore so so it was a tough scenario um, but at the same time we have we had nothing to lose so we and we also had a die hard attitude or can do attitude and we were passionate about design so we knew what we want to do it or we want to do or work with the design or work in design 
to a certain extent, but we need to get some venues. And then there are smaller projects that came up initially, um, that small projects. And then the first one was a Volkswagen um, in Port Elizabeth, sorry, that something which I haven't spoken about it. We live in a city called Port uh, City, Port Elizabeth. This is on the coast, the coastal city that's by the side of the bay. Um, but that's also an automotive sector. Um, um, we we'll call it as a Detroit of Africa. Probably three um, auto manufacturers within this province, and one was Volkswagen South Africa. So we were asked to. Or oh, at that particular stage, there's individuals, I think Diti and um, I. So we got this particular project to create a small exhibition in the city, um, in, in a town where the Volkswagen's base plant is. And that is to communicate about a 1 billion investment, um, the Volkswagen um, Germany company given to Volkswagen South Africa. And the idea was to communicate that idea to the general and then the masses and to create a certain positive attitude and positive um, experiences and, and warming up them for, the, uh, for that particular um, investment drive. And uh, we had to create a simple language and then a typical yeah. African style, yeah. a narrative um, exhibition. It was a, a storytelling yeah, exhibition. It was yeah. a very interesting uh, assignment that came our way. We, we just had to, in a, in a storytelling way, we had to communicate the concepts, simple concepts of, of, of what does it mean to to be working full with full capacity. What does it mean uh, to um, uh, how will the community benefit from from this? So if you work hard, you're going mm -hmm. to benefit. You're the direct community. So the blue collar workers, families, etc., just walked in with their with their kids, with food in their hands, and just went through this this exhibition. It was quite successful. Uh, another one that we came across, which was really nice, was uh, Finstaden's uh, <laughs> uh, Bridge of Death. So it uh, an engineering marvel on on one level, but very notorious, uh, very tall, but very notorious uh, bridge with a few suicide cases. We were approached to to say that we, we were approached to say how how do we intervene? Uh, do we need to build up some prevention methods? And what can we? I'm what? So how? Sick. How do we say that? And how do we communicate that? In, 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 instead of showing the gory images, so if when one if one falls from this bridge, uh, the body disintegrates, and um, from there, that, that gave us an idea to say that how how do we take a metaphor of of uh, and and okay. create a metaphor <laughs> saying how does what what happens to your body. Uh, so we we had we did quite a lot of research in this. We went into the police station. We had a couple of uh, chats with how 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 much money goes into sort of uh, rectifying this the, yeah. the episodes of suicides and all. So we created this metaphor. If you if a tomato just takes four seconds, uh, fractions of seconds, yeah, to seconds. fall from yeah. that height and just totally disintegrates and that was quite a nice uh, uh, campaign and what happens and call for action so the uh, we the, the this was for an ngo who was looking for and i think they they they, they got the funding and a, a full structure has been built on the top yeah. so that gave us a, a, a an idea that actually we can project. do it yeah, yeah. Small, smaller projects, very small projects coming our way to say that, okay, we have a chance. Um, we can look into uh, building up something on this level. Um, and uh, with a leap of faith, uh, we decided that, okay, we will form our consultancy yeah. and we'll call it Design at Bay. Strategic brand innovators only came a little bit later. Uh, uh, just a funny story about Design at Bay when we did started <laughs> about thinking about what do we name it. The first thing was, okay, what do we name and all. And we're sitting across the bay because Port Elizabeth is a port city. And, you know, we go to the beaches and, and lovely blue star beaches there. Um, and we just said mm -hmm. that, okay, what is what what will be for D and what will be for B? And D, D for Deepthi and Design and Bay for Bobbin and <laughs> the Bay just came across. And we put a, we inserted a little bit of an at. And that was very, very, very classy at that stage because it was accepted very well. Technology was evolving. This and was there's I pun think, involved in it. Yeah, there's a pun involved in it. <laughs> and this was in 1999 kind of you know when before as we were thinking and starting up and also that was a that was an interesting what does design it we do design it way is uh, we wanted to have a 
uh, we the, the initial concept was that we just we create a consultancy which is um, a consultancy for communication design works uh, our skill yeah. sets uh, bobbins uh, industrial design perhaps architecture design and all that but over a period of time we, we realized that uh, the designer bay started looking into more of communication design works with with uh, with what we were getting and then we we started looking so design is and uh, looking at, uh, is an uh, agency which looks into effective communication through design research strategy and rolling it into integrated marketing platforms so that's what we mm -hmm. we do um, we work in multiple sectors actually um, and um, and the sectors that were uh, the the works that were attracting us was perhaps looking into more meaningful work where, where can we contribute to a better society um, to a broader to the broader the betterment of a broader society IDZ with the new South Africa coming up IDZ was a uh, was a, a initiator from the government on a, on a very strong level to create these SEZs IDZs in different parts of this country um which becomes uh um you know uh, uh, building up into the manufacturing sectors to upskill and upgrade the people the previously disadvantaged peoples especially on on that level to to reach out to the masses create jobs create uh, skills tr transform uh, training and skills development and and uh, and job creation so the two the the top uh, um the two top, uh, the KUKA and the Eastland and IDZ sit in our province, which is Eastern Cape. That's where we live. KUKA is, is right next door to us, 20 k from uh, from Port Elizabeth. East London is just a, a little bit far. Swanee Automotive's Economic Zone is the newest uh, uh, SEZ. And I think in this presentation, I would like to, we would like to speak yeah. more about our work within the economic development scenario that has actually taken us by we we enjoy in enjoy that uh, enjoy working on on that level uh, other sectors that we have worked with are we also worked we also got higher into education. higher education yeah. higher education we worked extensively with uh, our local university uh, really um, doing creating how do you attract so we were working with the international students uh, international office and how do you recruit students how do you how do you uh, market uh, your university to get them uh, we started getting a little bit uh, uh, we, we got into many other universities that we worked in and then we also worked with one of the youngest university uh, which is University of Pumalanga and this was from the very beginning the university opened up in its doors in 2015 and since then, we have been involved um, working with them on their marketing marketing initiatives. We also have worked a little bit. Uh, something which is which has been quite interesting is uh, festival marketing, uh, which brings in the uh, you know the local South African flair. Biltong Festival. Uh, we did marketing of Biltong Festival for five years, which in a small quaint town in in the Eastern mm -hmm. Cape. And a uh, biltong is uh, the dry meat, uh, the whole, you know, with uh, and it's very, very pop, uh, favorite food, uh, uh, a snack here. Yeah. And people will come. It's open to the public. It's open to that, and people will and create a dance. Uh, sorry, a music festival along with it. So have music, have fun, bring your family, kind of a scenario, and um, have beer. Uh, so SAB will come in, uh, South African mm -hmm. breweries and um, that then Maher it was another one which was more about uh, another street festival which was more about fashion bringing the fashion industry in etc we also found ourselves working uh, in the last five six years we have been working quite a lot with uh, un agencies so uh, internationally in international sector has been tapped on and uh, we have well, we have got some framework agreements um from yeah. from on, with them kuka project um is one of our breakthrough projects and to a certain extent our pride if we can say we yeah. have been um we we got involved in it from the very beginning we were told this was a uh just to uh just to very quickly take you through um 
we started from it's 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 it uh, it started in 2000 1999 when they started the process of saying a new idz will be formed the biggest in, in the southern hemisphere and um, we were taken to a, a higher level of uh, elevated area to say that that's the that's the big area that is that will be developed in the vision is in, 50, in in the next 20 to 30 40 years there will be a full um uh economic development hub of activity which is very close to the city of port elizabeth with a deep water port with another port right there so the linkage with the roads with the sky and and the sea is just a just a matter of 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 this kind of a development it was one of the biggest projects in the country at that stage um first thing was to develop a brand so we developed this logo which was a it was a, which was a public participatory process and and uh, winning the competition and it it just captured the transformation of of the land the water and the with human effort really showcasing uh, a symbol of hope and prosperity so and the tagline which right time right place right time right choice was one of our campaigns that we did eventually in 2005 and that has now become the value proposition of of this so it's 22 years down the line 23 years down the line the logo is still the brand is still very fresh and, and, and very very uh, yeah so that is something that we did um this is a timeline of of the milestones uh, of, of the project that really panned out. So we had been involved in the first seven years activity um, and, and later on uh, from 2015, 2017 onwards, we are still plugged into the, into, into the project. The, to get into these kind of projects is a, is a tedious process. It's quite a, quite a bit of, it's a, it's a massive tendering process. It's three, two to three phases of of presenting presenting your concepts presenting your marketing uh, uh, of, of of what this the scope of what you your vision to cater to this and then also then pitching on on a high level on on a high level where you pitching only comes when you have been shortlisted and uh, uh, and the final two or three or four yeah. participants to enter uh, th these projects are high level projects and uh, this was of interest for everybody in the country. So we had, we had, we were contested from from agencies, big agencies from Cape Town, from Johannesburg, and uh, and all areas. Yeah. The Cuckoo project started. So we, we with the logo. Then the first thing was was developing a stationery, developing the stationery items, the first brochure, uh, you know, the first billboard. Uh, the first TV commercial, the first campaign, um, and 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 it it spanned over the public, the first phase of uh, uh, you know um, uh, different sector marketing, etc. So if I if I can just very quickly say that the, if we can just divide the uh, project into to three layers, would be a construction phase, which was the initial phase, um, and then the secondary phase was uh, once the uh, target um, sectors were identified um, then uh, basically sector strong very strong sector marketing drives uh, locally nationally internationally um, and yeah uh, so just one sec um, yeah sorry um, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on one hand when the koha speaks about big investment drives so that's the typical id sets that speaks about it but at the same time what koha was i segregated or separated itself from the other industrial development zones or other countries are two layers one it's a social activation and the second is environmental activation um id sets are created for job generation at the same time skills development koha with the koha means we had to be part of all of those aspects um, the first one that we were involved with, along with the project uh, branding structures and campaigning structures, et cetera, to activate a job seekers um, database generation. And for that, there ought to be, uh, there are workshops at every small towns and townships. 
uh, within the Eastern Cape and then to ensure that I mean, people are aware of such a development that is taking place and also they register themselves into the database so that as the construction progresses, I mean, people have been SMO or small businesses and small construction agencies were formed and the staff or the workers could be registered and then they could be economically or they could become part of this particular construction process. And in order to activate that, I mean, there were also a series of communication channels, including that Kuha News. That is a tabloid newspaper, and that used to come up every month, and that used to be part of every newspaper in the local environment, so that people are aware of it. So the stories regarding construction, and stories, any stories that, and this is a, this is around 16 page um, supplement or 16 page newsletter that used to publish from. Um, from the Kuha, and then we handled. And uh, in that um, timeline, all the material, all the images that we had shown is also designed and then generated by the design and by the team. At that stage, I mean, we just grew from two members to probably another three or four member team. Again, it was a very small, compact team that worked through it. Um, similarly, there's an interesting thing about the economic activation. Um, while the construction was going on and the 11,000 hectares of land, um, the, it's a, partially it's became a property development on one hand, and um, the scientist or the environmentalist also identified there's a particular butterfly in one of those areas, and it's a half a square kilometer um, the place, and it's called an Allodis Clarke, and that is unique to that particular Kuha environment. And uh, the ecosystem is that Alodis Clarke is support of the butterfly um, comes out from the ground instead of the tree branches in the typical scenario. That's, that's the, a remarkable symbiotic relationship between the butterfly or between the pupa and a set of ants. So those ants nurture the, um, the pupa in the ground and then the, at the right time, the butterfly springs out from the ground. So we had to literally go, oh, as a team, I think we, we went and into a farm uh, where uh, Mr. Pringle, this is one of the farmer, and then he conducts, and he had this remarkable specimens he collected for during the last 25, 30 years. And then we could see and then cover that particular story or research that, build up stories, and then publish that particular one. So as a designer, we had to build up the teams. And then one particular significant um, team member is the researcher, a uh, researcher in the economic sector and researcher in the environmental sector. So we literally build up the teams on one hand, and we also literally build up the staff members that needs to be um, the translating these ideas into final products and then works with us. So. At some stage in the early stages, um, the design thinking alone wouldn't associate, but you need to have the right kind of teams. And then those teams are not that easy, and especially when you're in a segregated society, um, always there will be a competition and the challenges. So you have to build up your own team so that your work is the right on top. So we have to safeguard that particular aspect on one hand. And, but at the same time, we have to be very, very good with respect to the quality of the works that we produce. Um, yeah. So uh, the, uh, another phase uh, uh, was, was the campaign, a very strong, uh, how do you communicate everything related to the KUKA project um, to, to, the, to the audience? Audiences were internal and external. So we, we created the first, very first project. So I've just listed the, over this period, over the span of the seven years that we initially worked with, with, with the project, we created many um, campaigns. One of the first one was Dawn of a New Era. Um, and Dawn of a New Era, more, more so about the New Democratic Republic and also about uh, the, uh, of, of the South Africa and also about the um, East London, um, sorry, um, the um, mm -hmm. Kuka, uh, you know, Kuka IDZ. Um, another over a period, so that was really starting. That was rolled out into uh, uh, billboards. So what you see here is is this picture of a billboard advertisements, local advertisements, uh, international advertisements. We had we placed advertisements in Financial Times, London, and um, 
um, communicating that to the local audiences um, on, on the ground by newsletters, by roadshows, etc., and then external comms. So here, the one of the one of the good projects, one of the other uh, uh, campaign that we did was Kuka is the solution. So when the sector uh, were, were formed when they when they understood that these are the so sectors that uh, IDZ is going to be really uh, following, which was uh, more metallurgical sector, which was textiles at that stage, and automotive definitely with uh, with us being in in the automotive uh, um, uh, you know space in in Eastern Cape. So these these were very specifically generated, extremely good graphics, um, and um, the campaign was then rolled out on, on different, different medias. Another campaign was Right Place, Right Time, and later on it became Right Place, Right Time, Right Choice, when the sectors were developed a little bit further, and then investment promotion activities were going on. Invest with, with the investor promotion, as the, uh, you know, the project pro progressed, uh, the, uh, there was so much of, with the sectors being uh, really demarcated, the sector specialist working on them and then really have to go out and talk to to investors so uh there was very specific investor promotion kits that were developed these were developed with um uh, uh these were to intensify the marketing activities at that stage um sector the the kit would be having a whole lot of information about the the project their timelines the gifts in it and all that we developed many of these uh, 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 information kits if we can say uh, packaged in different languages packaged in english french italian chinese wherever they they were a german wherever the sector specialist wanted to target and go and and, and create a roadshow and market that those entire packaging was done so this was quite a, a very intensive work in terms of so all these projects, with, within all these things, we had to really workshop things with with uh, technical teams, mm. with the sector specialist, sitting down, really understanding, uh, understanding the the whole content, and then disseminating that and information into end. yes, into into a a, a marketing uh, language. We had content developers, but the design team was very on top. Uh, we were very on top of what the requirement was and and we were successfully uh, were able to deliver uh, return another one which was uh, which we also did was the first uh, tv advertisement our first tv advertisement and kuka's first tv advertisement and um, this was also um, and, and multimedia um, 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 uh, things that we generated with multi-sector within the sector uh, specific marketing. Um, KUKA advertisement was really interesting. KUKA, uh, the, the KUKA uh, uh, TV advert was, was in the boardroom with the CEO all the time, um, from top management um, to, um, uh, you know, top, sitting with top management and working with the CEO's office, uh, 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 you know, pitching at, at, at with different uh, idea concepts, storyboarding, the scripts, everything, and brainstorming ideas with them, with them, with that team, and all. So this in this one, we we took John Carney. John Carney is one of the local icons here in Port Elizabeth, um, very strong um, actor, theater specialist. Theater specialist. Um, he also has acted in Black Panther, the father of uh, the Black Panther, <laughs> and uh, so th those were the, the, the those were very interesting things where people were interested and in, and in getting the local you know local icons coming into and speaking about the construction phase and what the real vision and and the hope for the uh, for the country is for the hope for the country and and the province. So some of these, uh, uh, yeah, and, and the multimedia was very, very interesting. Multimedia is fully, fully packaged information packs uh, for the different sectors um, in, in, in different languages and um, in identified by different colors and, and all that. Currently, we have been, so this is the, 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 the so far the areas that I showed was, uh, was um, more in terms of um, the initial phase, initial phase right. where the sector, 
Kuka project uh, has now really grown and has many other service offerings. IDZ uh, is still one of their main focus areas, but it has it has diversified quite a lot. And currently we are busy uh, uh, for the last one, uh, one and a half years, we have been working on, on the Kuka application, mobile application, which is still in development. If you look at the back uh, uh, scene, the, the wires framing and, and uh, uh, um, is, is really yeah. not seen. It's such a massive offering. The, the intensity of that information is huge. And my team is developing the uh, UI UX and, and with a technical team uh, the, who is developing the back end. But this information architecture, categorizing of this information, really saying what needs to be connected, what needs to go where, and, and the site architecture was quite an intense uh, experience and, and a very interesting world. So with that, we conclude the Kuka project. Uh, another one, which was the East London IDZ, which is another uh, a similar and a younger IDZ, if we can say, 4,000 hectares of land in the, in, in the same province, and targeting very different sector, um, to again, to develop a prime industrial location. Um, mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and um, uh, with, with, with a very strong focus with automotive, uh, renewable energy, agro-processing and um, ICT sectors in that. This was also a participatory, uh, sorry, uh, the, this was also, um uh tendering we got this through a uh, tendering process a, a extremely stringent tendering process and we worked for we we were we we became the strategic communication um and marketing partners for i i uh, for elidz from 2012 to 2014 and within this we did quite a lot of work so marketing and brand uh, positioning was very much part of it awareness about the investment promotion creating campaigns which were how 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 idc uh, how the east london idz has has impacted um, and then marketing tools of, of all the time need everybody needs marketing tools and strong marketing tool which was which was a uh, investor promotion um, um, a DVD which was I think a 15 minute long um, really to working with photographers with our videographers um, script writing and um, animation and and creating a very intense um, work here which speaks about, which talks to the different sectors and all. So that was something really in, in, very interesting. PR and advocacy was another one where we worked with uh, 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 another uh, engaging media, doing media events, media roadshows, creating specific speaker forums on radio for, for the key people, media buying and strategizing. But a very interesting work that we did here was this is uh, 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 the, th the third section of of our in, uh, involvement very strong involvement was organizational mm -hmm. cultural enhancement activities and the the ethos was the 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 whole thing was that that um idz uh, morale was down there was no, not yeah, internal, the stuff. internal stuff so this was a more about really targeting internal comms and creating a cultural enhancement scenario and what could be the possible interventions for that and um, we we had uh, we 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 the, the there was a 40 percent budget marketing budget allocated to this which was huge um so we we could understand that there was a, a big void and the, the top between the top management and the uh, lower management and people working in their own silos, finance not really understanding what communications role is and all. Oh, which, uh, 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 yeah, and, and very oh. strongly on that level. Mm -hmm. So in order to assist DLIDZ with cultural enhancements, we organized a cultural workshop and we created a very different approach for, for this, uh, for, to, uh, to, to address this. Um, so a cultural workshop was conducted with an external facilitator and it was just to understand the reality and the vision of the organization mm -hmm. at that particular stage. The, in the workshop, people came in, so there was, there was a half a day session where everybody closed their works and met at this uh, uh, facility mm -hmm. where from top management, the CEO, 
to the mm-hmm. town, to the tea, to the tea staff, lady, right? yeah. all the staff co- were collected. And an and, and audit kind of a thing was generated for or for and to explore topics like accountability, leadership, fairness and equity, ethics, diversity, open and honest communication, organization efficiency, problem solving, rewards and recognitions. So this particular slide shows a little bit of what what the outcome was. So that honest that feedback was then captured and was completed and and the report was generated from there after assessing and analyzing it fully and was um, and then the first the and, and the the gaps were identified the biggest gaps that came out from that were accountability leadership and communication issues that the 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 organization was of, of facing so our solution to that was we created some we said what could be a possible way to bring everything to get everybody together in an environment which is fast-paced and uh, you know um, where people can integrate people are busy people are in meetings but how does one integrate so we created ecosylum games ecosylum is a kosovo world uh, um, and home. yeah and it means my home and my id said my home so a sense of belonging was created by this this was launched and this is a num uh, uh, a compilation of of 10 games so the approach that we took was to by to bridge the gap we want, we said creative exercises games will be a very very good uh, motivator to bring people together and to get and to arrive to a required change that is required uh, or a shift in that change uh, 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 in the bigger picture so we created 10 different games so my team created came up with um 10 different games the whole okay. idz team was divided into 10 groups from so in one group the ceo will be with the tea lady or with very junior um uh, uh worker or on on uh, ad- admin staff and and we created um uh, games for the um, sorry rules uh for the games we created the objectives how to play kind of a thing point system that you will get and outcomes that will be that is expected and resulting from there so the games i will just touch base with a very few games that we with there there are quite a lot and they, they were quite interesting so creative creativity fun and talent was really the backbone of of building this up bringing them together one game was idc uh, idz national um which was uh, to come up with a brand name so it was a creative exercise again raise the flag make create a flag create a national anthem in your group create your own identity and how do you do that so music you can bring music you can create the national anthem you can sing you can dance um you can do whatever you want but you come up so the 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 all of those were all the different teams had to do that um then another one was commercial tactics um to create so you know tv advertisements and and you know t- uh, the, the social media and all those things or those cl- video clips very very common these days so people uh you, so we said that okay why don't you create a tv advert so it was more about so select a industry or a select a sector in within idz and create uh an advert for that which involves uh, script writing storytelling So really yeah fun. yeah so videography it's taking with your cell phone yeah. cameras just doing that creating a jingle creating a music and and coming together and and and, and saying that okay what you have done etc another game was eel i did a time capsule uh, a time tunnel so basically to explore the history of idz so it, perhaps creating a, a set of pictures and uh, people plug in at different times in these organizations so a, a person who has been working for 10 10 good years can actually have have had had a highlight of it within his career and puts a card and i'd say i say how identified so it's like really collaborating in changing exchanging ideas and exchanging the history and and in in a fun way and and all and embracing youth was one other one which was promoting idz values which was to come up with a t-shirt and all so it was very interesting um uh, on 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 that level so they this was created for 10 months and um a post and uh, 
pre and post evaluation was also done. And at the end, everybody just came together and had an award session. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that was a very, very strong team building to bring the, the gaps within the cultural um, um, organize, within the culture, within the organization. We also did uh, media monitoring and um, anal analysis in this one, which was very, very uh, strongly done within just to ga uh, gauging the, you know, the, uh, the engagement of what, what the media is talking about, the journalists, et cetera, et cetera, and analyzing it with, uh, so that we used uh, two media monitoring companies. They will give us, provide us with the data and then we will do the analysis and create the report writing, which was actually an additional skill set that we acquired with this and um, to an experience in order to to be able to um, enhance and add uh, feedback to to the client where they should really be targeting or whom should they be approaching. I don't know how we're doing with time. Um, yes, uh, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> but we're running out. Yeah. Yes, we are. We are taking. <laughs> we are. We have quite a lot to say. Yeah. Uh, okay, so just very really quickly, uh, uh, Raj, we will really quickly wrap up. But th this was another one where we understood the power of uh, social social media marketing. This was uh, uh, another the newest uh, e economic zone, Africa's first automotive city in the Shrani area. And again, it was a burst campaign. It was a 10 week long campaign that we had to create. So we created a very strong uh, uh, online presence with a, a jobs portal and SMME portal. And the whole focus was to call um, the SMMEs in that area so that they can have job creation. They can come, the SMEs can work in, in, in that area. So we used a, uh, we uh, we used print, we used broadcast, etc. But a very strong um, uh, thing that came up here was uh, lead generation through the digital marketing scenario, and a very strong marketing camp uh, a digital marketing campaign was created, and um, a extreme uh, with a two pronged approach to to get people to uh, register on the website but also to generate leads and, and, and to create that and, and that the objective was met. So what, what do we do? If I, we created, the, created this, uh, this one, this uh, uh, diagram, which speaks about where we are playing and what are we seeing the role of the role of communication on, on a very broader uh, ecosystem. So if we look at the, there are two stakeholders that we, the, if we look at, stakeholder identify uh, classification is mostly external stakeholders whether they are uh, your um, investors whether they are whether they are funders whether they are donors or you know whether there's government or whether it involves community and internal stakeholders which is your internal teams etc and the area that we work with is it is really communications um, marketing branding and 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 to a touch point sometimes touching point with uh, public relations to create sustainable innovative solutions sometimes these mingle together and they intervene or sometimes we we work only with a few items but that is the broader picture that we have been working with and um, uh, we also work with when we have to tap in we tap into stronger broader teams so with the uh, with the, the this slide is just showcasing what we have got into with um, um, the uh, UN United Nations. We work with many different in many different countries at this stage, and uh, that has been a very good experience so far. Um, we come back to our title: Ideas for Growth. Yeah. Um, so when we speak about ideas for growth, um, as a designers, we have been very careful not to get into fmcg or not to get into inducive marketing and strategy or marketing context we have been extremely careful in working with the clients or working in a specific sector that has got broader um, improvement in, in or improvement in a, or contribution in a broader society so we spoke about inclusive and sustainable growth and if you look at all these clients to a greater extent, they're working for the enhancement. Um, and we are as a small compact. We are a compact design agency that can handle um, complex projects. 
I think that we have worked through and then established over the number of years. And, and we are also competitive. We can compete with, um, not because of the might, but because of probably the creative spirit or probably the intellectual spirit and probably the dedication that we can compete with the bigger agencies, but in a specific environment uh, that motivates us. And uh, we have got created our own systems and structure. We uh, never become a business um, practice. We never into growing big. That's there were conscious decisions. Um, many businesses wanted to um, probably become partner with us, I and mean, then we kind of kept aside, and then see that that's not our attitude in terms of growing in terms of numbers. But we kept it to the maximum growth at uh, any given time. We grew around eight to ten staff members, but otherwise we maintain around seven, eight member team, and it's a, a journey of constant learning. So we, every day we are learning. And it's a, also an innovative working system. We build up systems for ourselves um, rather than copying from the existing um, structure. So the projects that we showcased uh, very quickly are just showcasing our growth, our personal growth, um, our team's growth, as well and, as, and as well as the society's, the growth. society's yeah. growth and, yes. and the clients that we work with. So yeah. yeah. Um, thank you. Sorry if we have taken a lot more <laughs> <Sorry>. time. <laughs> My goodness, we are very late. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Vipti. That was uh, a major eye opener in terms of uh, being at a place where which is transforming the South Africa. Now we'll open the floor to questions. Uh, Can so... I close my window? Yeah, please close. Uh, yeah. I, I can stop sharing. Yeah. Right. Before we move on, I, I, I would uh, request uh, Mukendi, who is who also represents the continent, to start with his comments and questions or whatever to uh, either add on to this uh, <laughs> as a perspective. Mukendi, you get the right to start the Q&A first. Um. Thanks, Ravi. Uh, mine is, uh, I'm very excited to see my fellow IDCians and uh, uh, also South African uh, buddies uh, speaking about very exciting projects which I can relate to. Uh, and like uh, Deepti and Boban, um, I think two uh, people that connect Africa and India, uh, Mahatma Gandhi and um, also Mandela. Nelson Mandela. And actually, the place uh, in which both Deepti and, and, and Boban operate, are you still at the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University in Port Yes, that's right. Uh -huh. So that's I know right, Boban, really. Boban also <laughs> professionally uh, because we've also taught students in common, uh, yeah. done external examinations. Uh, and it was very exciting to see another editions. I can tell you it's a special bond that we have everywhere around the world. Uh, and personally, I was very excited to to, to know that Deepti and uh, Boban are in South Africa at a time when we didn't realize just how international uh, the alumnus of, of um, IDC is. So I just wanted to agree with them in principle that the training we got at IDC uh, prepared us to engage anywhere in the world. And this is a tribute to Professor Advanka and all our other uh <laughs> that you're doing a fantastic job and your legacy lives on through us and uh even in the third generation through the students that we've also mentored uh in the same way i'm also very excited to see that the projects that you're involved in are socially conscious uh and um, south africa is an excellent uh living lab if you may of how to deal with wicked problems of a social nature mm -hmm. and i'm excited to see how designers come in so Ravi, I'm sorry, I'm not asking a question, but I'm just excited uh, <laughs> to be in this happy space and uh, to you. tell uh, our friends Saubona, and uh, we'll continue uh, supporting one another. Uh, thank you very oh, much. Lovely. Thank you, Mugendi. That is really great, Mugendi. Um, that's exactly what we felt. I mean, an IDC connection is wherever you go. I mean, it's, it is part of your heartbeat. Indeed. Um, and the environment that it, it, the ethos that has been kind of distilled into you, I think that dissipates into the environment where you are. So 
this may not be a very culturally driven set of works and then activities, but at the same time, if you distill down into the core value sets that become part of the work ethics of everyday work. And design is not a segregated one. Design is an integral part of it. So thank you. So, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And uh, keep up the good work. Eh? Next time I'm in PE, I'll be certain to look out for you. Uh, and if you visit Nairobi, please uh, drop in. Yes, thank definitely. You. Yes, will do. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Um, please go ahead. Yes, uh, It was a wonderful work. We, I was very happy to see the range of work that you're doing. So it's really great. I just have one small observation that African graphic design has its own sort of a style of its own. No? I mean, it's very different and <laughs> unique. How is it that it doesn't reflect in your work? Is it deliberate that you kept away from that? Yeah, all right. That it's a yeah. even no, answer. No, no, you can it's, answer an, yeah. it's a good question. Um, it's a good question on many levels. Um, what generally there is a question about <clears throat> the language of the design and the expression of it. Where does it come from? Does it come from the local context and then um, culture? And if so, then whose culture? So South Africa is, has got a checkered past specifically because of that one dominant culture enforced a particular uh, outlook, value sets, and an ideology. And as the country goes through the transition phase, there's always there is a question in terms of that cultural attributes need to be come up and need to be expressed. And that is very strong. And when you speak in a specific context, say, for example, in an investor development or investor um, communication environment, and you're dealing with the global or you're dealing with the international and national um, target audience, whose language should one should use it? So that is a conscious decision uh, yes, yeah. from our side as designers as well as the institution side. Um, so hence the projects that we presented, the industrial development zones presentations, oh. they are probably with the language of the business. Yes, yeah. Um, on the other hand, I mean, if you want to express about, I mean, if you probably take us through those festival marketing, so that is generally dealing with um, specific- The South African yeah. flair comes in there, yeah. And that's very much to the, um common mass or even in the industrial development uh, projects there were particular communications to the um, general public not the investors etc i think there i mean it's probably much more vibrant and colorful expression that has come through it and maybe we haven't expressed those uh, specific products in detail maybe one could do that at a later stage yeah um, but I think we were conscious about it. At some stage, we even developed something called a techno-African um, style or an outlook. Um, that one could say that, okay, it's technologically driven, but not that directly culturally driven um, expression. I'm not sure that I answered you, Prof. No, no, you have answered, but it always kind of uh, worries me that what is happening in India, the mistake that we are doing in India is being repeated everywhere. Mm. You know, too westernized for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> for instance, it, it, it's important to look at Indian definition of modern, which is different than the European definition of modern, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And that is that should be the kind of aim that we should have, particularly since we are quite away from Europe and have our own cultural tradition. But it's yeah. a wonderful work in terms of, because you had a clientele which demanded that. So it makes sense that 
because you're working for business. One would have liked to see your work for festival things also, but there wasn't enough time. Yeah, maybe we should, yeah. <laughs> we should create a, another opportunity. Sorry, this, I don't is want... a, this is a very small uh, uh, amount of work that we are showcasing. So it was really difficult to filter what do we showcase. And we decided to showcase because we were talking about how we have grown uh, with these industrial development zones, working on them, upskilling ourselves, etc. So that is when we selected that. Mm. But it was it, there, there, there's a lot of different kind of works that we do. Um, um, so selecting that was not that easy. <laughs> yeah, I'm no, sure. I'm sure you would be doing that. I'm sure yes, we'll yeah. have another uh, round of it, which focuses on <laughs> the <laughs> the culturally relevant aspects of the project. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank, so, you, so, thank you, Prof. Thank you, Professor Tonker. Yeah, it's a very uh, important comment that you made. Yeah. I remember both of you. Uh, I have separate memories of working with both of you. I remember uh, Boban worked on Star with us. You remember? Ah, oh, that's right. <laughs> yes. Of course. Um, how can I forget? <laughs> Dipti had a very long discussion on John Piaget's work with children for our project. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. After that, anybody who wanted to do something with China, I would refer to your project, you know, saying, go and read that report so you'll know what. <laughs> I see. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's such a... so interesting. Yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, Suresh. Thank you. Hi, Dipti. Hi, Bob. How are you guys? Hi, Suresh. <laughs> Lovely. I, I mean, it's really nice and very interesting to see. I mean, to see the works and the kind of work that you are doing and kind of the industry that you're working for. I have a different question. Uh, my question is more, why did you decide it has to be South Africa to start this journey kind of thing? <laughs> <laughs> that is one thing. And I wanted to know if Bobin continued, did something with his, um, you know, with the skills in bamboo, which he had uh, quite, uh, uh, you know very interestingly worked on during his idc days and how did you did you take it further when you were there in south africa yeah all right um suresh um we, we spoke about why we came to south africa that is purely a family connection and then the reason at some stage we thought we need to get a break um while we were living in Trivandrum, we were practicing we were working and uh, we thought we would take a break of five years but uh, when you have got children and then you can't reroute um, that easily so we came to PE and then PE became a uh, PE is a coastal city somehow that resembled and that reminded me uh, of us of Trivandrum where I studied architecture and mm. lived for longer so there was a certain connection on that level so and then PE is, a, PE is an efficient city it's a 10 minute city that's what we call it because it's within 10 minutes we can move anywhere and just got remarkable beaches sandy beaches it's a lovely place to be so it's a good place for children raise the children and have a family style family working system yeah, yeah. I, I mean so from, a, from an economic uh, you know from a job or a business it is a very I, I don't know how you made that decision <laughs> yeah and then um, yeah. i think we were brave enough at that oh we were foolish enough <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was... <laughs> <laughs> and then and I also maintained my architecture link. I taught at the university uh -huh. and then okay. I carried through. And with respect to bamboo, and somehow um, there was absolutely there is no bamboo growth in South Africa, or at least in the in the southern region because of the climatic conditions to a certain extent. So mm -hmm. I tried to do something, but in the recent times, in the last five years. I started growing bamboo, different um, species, uh, because I want to get back into the bamboo. Um, mm -hmm. But I also started working with Rajri. Some of these industrial development zones has got um, initiatives that promotes. And then in the recent, probably two or three years ago, we started um, connecting with the people on bamboo, sharing information. And then beyond that, I mean, I motivate my students to get into architecture. And yes, I mean, some of them have literally done that. 
but not I haven't gone the bamboo product development stage yet, but definitely I would love to get into it. Um, that's a little bit of a sore uh, idea oh, <laughs> in my mind. Okay. One other small question to Deepthi, because I know she is very musically connected, talented, and she, yeah. she sang quite uh, often. So I want to know how did you, did you use your music skills in your uh, design? And how and do you still sing? Then you should sing a couple of lines here, it would be lovely. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Singing has, has taken a very big back seat see, for me. Yeah. yeah. No. So no, not, okay. yeah, nothing that nothing that I do in that uh, I enjoy listening to music. Yeah. Sorry, I can't help you there, so <laughs> no, you're fine. asking a difficult one. <laughs> Uh, fine, guys, guys, it's getting a bit a uh, little uh, late. Um, so yeah, we are overshooting mm -hmm. our time. So, uh, thank you, Bob Deepthi, for that very enlightening, very interesting talk that you shared and your experiences. Uh, I'm sure everybody's got a different perspective and insight on what what is happening in South Africa right now. Yeah. So. Uh, so with that, I'll be uh, closing the recording, and then informally you can continue, or okay. we can catch up later also. Not a problem. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thank you very much. And thank you for inviting you. us. Yeah. Good night. Thank you. Atunga. Yes. Lovely Mugendi meeting. Just, yeah. Yes. Lovely meeting, fellow ideas. And thanks for all the comments. Thank all. Take care, and uh, good night. Yes. Good, good night. night. Yeah. yeah. Bye, Bye, guys. Bye.